almost didn't make it, I almost didn't last. Why does the week go by so slow, the weekend so fast? But luckily the day's come to take my kids away. It's not Sunday, Monday, or Thursday, that's right, it's Friday, Friday. Tonight I'll party with my friends. Friday, Friday, today I know the weekend. So I'll get out of bed. And be to work all time. I'll give the state of the car, but the next two days of mine. And when my day's over and the final workout was passed, I'll go home, have a shot of Quero to the boss who can kiss my Friday, Friday. Tonight I'll party with my friends. Friday, Friday. Today I know the weekends. Friday, Friday. Yeah, it's Friday, bitches. Enjoy yourselves. Oh, thank goodness. Thank goodness. You packing? Ugh, oh, I'm doing all the things. It feels like, yes. Good luck with that. So, a little bit of snow. Yeah, so when I got up at uh, 1 o'clock and left the house at about 1.30, it was... Doing kinda, this? Well, it was kind of pausing. Uh, okay. There was a couple of flurries, but it had obviously blanketed the vehicles. The ground uh, in your yard had some snow, but the, the driveway did not. Uh, and then it picked up a little bit as I was sitting here over the last hour... And uh, there are some salt trucks and stuff out there working on, you know, getting some of the salt and sand down. But uh, it doesn't look like as much as we were maybe expecting. At least not yet. Well, and text us and let us know if that's not your situation. You might be listening to us somewhere else and be like, dude, I got six inches of snow, right? Yeah, I did see uh, up by the Twin Cities on I-94. It looks like it's pretty bad. So uh, we'll get to Sky Robert Shaw. We'll get to Doc's Racing Report. We'll get to our Friday edition of Bad News with Happy Music. Brackets busted all over the place yesterday, thanks to Oakland. More on that uh, okay. a bit later on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I wonder what I picked. Yeah. Hmm. Well, not very many people probably picked Oakland. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, more on that uh, and all sorts of other stuff. As Gene mentioned, get in touch with us. Visit rockmornings.com. Rockmornings.com. More of your rock mornings coming up in just a bit. Some snow during the overnights here in the lacrosse area. Not as much as I think we had been told we might be getting, but it looks like it's going to continue throughout the morning. Uh, there's a possibility some areas could see an additional four inches, but that seems rare. Uh, maybe another trace to an inch uh, in the immediate lacrosse area. But it yeah. looks like out by I-94 by the Twin Cities, it got uh, they got hammered with some snow. They did, yes. Very similar in downtown Eau Claire to what's in downtown lacrosse right now. So it's a dusting. Oh, the roads are covering. pretty clear, but they're, they've got salt, some slippery spots. Salt trucks are out. It's 30, so it's right at that. Mm. You know, mm-hmm. could get slick in certain places, so be careful. But it's not, I don't, it's its not that impactful for us. But up in the Twin Cities, if you're going that direction at all, Doc, are you driving a truck up there today? Because yeah. that be could careful. be a thing. Yeah. And it looks like more snow on the way on Sunday. On Sunday, could see up to another four inches. Yeah, starting in the morning, it looks like on Sunday and continuing through the day. But I'll be indoors watching basketball, mm-hmm. so it won't really matter. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Right, Shaw? Exactly. What else is happening? Uh, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has arrived in Tel Aviv, Israel, on the final stop in his sixth urgent trip to the region since the start of the war. Blinken says he'll share alternatives to Israel's planned ground assault into the southern Gaza town of Rafa during his talks with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and his war cabinet. Later today, the U.N. Security Council will vote on a U.S.-sponsored resolution declaring the imperative of an immediate and sustained ceasefire. It also emphasizes the urgent need for aid in Gaza. The World Health Organization says so little food has been allowed in that up to 60% of children under the age of five are now malnourished. Lawmakers in Washington have introduced a $1.2 trillion spending package that sets the stage for avoiding a partial government shutdown for several key federal agencies this weekend. The bill, unveiled yesterday, comes nearly six months into the current budget year and would allow Congress to complete its work in funding the government through September. Democrats were able to swat back scores of policy mandates and some of the steeper budget cuts that House Republicans were seeking to impose on non-defense programs. Wisconsin Assembly Speaker Robin Voss declares that a recall drive against him has failed. The Wisconsin Elections Commission has decided there are not enough valid signatures on the recall petitions from the district Voss has represented in the past decade. Voss said the recall organizers came woefully short of their goal and called the campaign a waste of time and resources. The speaker had earlier referred to recall supporters as whack jobs and morons. 
La Crosse will see nearly two dozen visits from big river boats this year, despite the shutdown of the company that owns the American Queen paddle wheeler. Jim Flotmeyer manages marine operations for the city's parks department and tells the La Crosse Park Board that his staff has been talking with another cruise company that's familiar with the city. The staff and myself have been working with American Cruise Lines, and American Cruise Lines is coming back to La Crosse for 2024. So we'll have 10 stops of American Cruise Lines, and uh, 10 stops of Viking, which gets us 20 stops this year. The Viking ships will be returning to the upper Mississippi for the third straight season. I think I saw the first barge is about ready to come through, too. Well, I know that uh, we had questions last week about Lock 7. Uh, apparently, there were some barges down there that were sitting there and had been sitting there for a while, and I guess they were doing maintenance mm. on that lock and dam. So it, I'm guessing that that might have come to an end, and that's why you're seeing a barge moving its way up. And the river's going to be clear now, right, with the, the yeah, weather the ice. essentially turning around. So, uh, But snow in the forecast uh, today, it looks like uh, maybe in the morning and then coming to an end by early afternoon. Yeah, I don't think we're going to see a lot more. No. And it's melting pretty quickly. The ground is so warm. Yeah, especially when it hits, you know, pavement. Uh, you'll see it on your vehicle, obviously, and on your grass. But vehicles uh, or uh, the, the streets themselves just, mm-hmm. yeah. Thank you, Shaw. Mm-hmm. More in uh, just a bit from Scott Robert Shaw. We'll get to Doc's racing report. Speaking of Doc. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's Friday, so I knew we were going to talk to him. He just texted in. He said, I'm in southwest Wisconsin today. Roads are pretty good. Yeah, it looks like all the way up through the valley, it, it, it's about the same, which is whatever this is, an inch, inch and a half. I mean, some uh, very wet, melty, slushy some areas slick, though. Be careful of that. Yeah, obviously, if you've got some uh, weather conditions or some traffic conditions in your area, please text us on the rock line, 608 7840957. You can find all our contact info online at rockmornings.com. We'll get to Nirvana in just a few minutes, but right now it's Bush. Rock Mornings. On air, <laughs> online, on the app. The madness has begun, and you can thank Jack Golke, Pewaukee's own Jack Golke, for breaking your brackets. Here's Golke again, putting up a three and hitting, looking for a foul as well, doesn't get one. Golke, here he is again, putting up a three. Goodness. Is anybody got fouled again? Here's Golke, that's a deep three. It's gone! 12 points already. Now there's a good switch by Wagner. Here he is again. Oh, oh Golke comes off the screen, fakes the three. Now he'll take it. <laughs> yes, sir! Great Shepard. closeout. Right out on Golke. He'll take it anyway. Oh. Why not? Why Golke not? takes it in from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. My goodness, what a night for Jack. So funny, that guy obviously didn't know the word Pewaukee. Yeah. And he's like, did, I think in his brain, he's like, did they mean Milwaukee and they messed up? Because, you know, if you're not from here and you you don't you never seen it before, you're like, oh, it looks just like Milwaukee. Maybe they messed up. But it's Pew- 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 Is that right? This guy's crazy. I, the stat they dropped yesterday during the I watched the game. It was it was you saw him literally beating the other team on his own. I mean, it was crazy. Oakland beating number three, Kentucky. 14th ranked Oakland beating Kentucky last night, 80 to 76, thanks to 32 points from Pewaukee's own Jack Golke, who hit 10 of 20 three point attempts. The other two points were from the free throw line. <laughs> Oakland now moving on to face number 11, North Carolina State. That game will be tomorrow. Nearly matching the NCAA tournament record of 11 three pointers that was set by Loyola Marymount's Jeff Fryer back in 1990. So it's been almost. 40 years since that record was set. This year, this is crazy. This is the stat I heard yesterday during the game. All right, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. This year, he hit 37% of his three-point shots on nearly 10 attempts per game in 34 games played. So this season, he played in 34 games. Yes. He's only shot eight attempts from inside the arc. So he the, always goes for the three-pointer? He he had 333 shots this season, and 325 of those 333 shots were from three-point land. Eight were from inside the three-point right, arc. He doesn't that is the craziest that. effing stat I've ever heard. They heard they said that, and I'm like, that can't be right. That's not right. And then I went online, and I'm like, holy crap, that is right. The dude just doesn't care about two-pointers at all. Yeah. 
Uh, by the way, he uh, is from Pewaukee originally. He earned Horizon League Sixth Man of the Year honors while averaging 12.2 points per game this season. There were a couple of other upsets yesterday in the NCAA Men's Tournament, which kicked off in the morning. All right, tell me about it. Number 11, Duquesne. They upset number 6, BYU, 71-67. And there is a professor at Duquesne. Yes. Who tweet, his name is Robert Edward Healy III. And he tweeted out, hashtag March Madness, hashtag shoo shoo rah rah. New announcement, class canceled due to March Madness. Description, go celebrate, I'll figure it out, Professor Healy. So they're supposed to have class today, and he nope. told all the students, F it, dudes, <laughs> go out and party it up. We just upset number six, BYU. I'll figure it out. <laughs> I don't need you to show up today. I Duquesne, just by the way, moves on to face number three, Illinois. That'll be tomorrow at 740 on TNT. Number 11, Oregon handily beat number six, South Carolina, right. 87 to 73. They move on to face number three, Creighton, at 840 tomorrow on TBS and True TV. And another 11 over another six as uh, North Carolina State beat number six, Texas Tech, uh, 80 to 67. They move on to face number 14, Oakland, uh, who, of course, beat Kentucky. That game will be at 6-10 on TBS and True TV. So the darling right now is Oakland, the 14th seed, upsetting number three, Kentucky. Bucks beat the uh, Nets last night, 115-108 in the NBA. The Bucks are now off until Sunday when they host Oklahoma City at 6 p.m. on NBA TV. Just 12 games left, by the way, in the regular season for the Bucks. And, of course, more games today in the NCAA Men's Tournament. 11.15 a.m. is when they kick off. Number okay. 9, Northwestern, taking on number 8, Florida Atlantic on CBS. I'm looking at my picks here. Number yeah. 2, Marquette, takes on number 15, Western Kentucky. That game is at 1 o'clock this afternoon, also on TBS. Okay. And uh, number 5, Wisconsin. 7.50 tonight? 8.40. At, uh, oh, at 8.40 tonight on CBS, taking on number 12, James Madison. Also today, the women's tournament gets underway with number 9, Michigan State. Taking on number eight, North Carolina. That's at 1030 this morning on ESPN2. And number one, Iowa, along with our girl, Caitlin Clark, yes, will take on yes. number 16, Holy Cross. That game tomorrow at 2 p.m. on ABC. Got it. So I had you Oakland. Go. You had them? I had Oakland. I don't know how. I don't know why <laughs> or how or what, but I'm seventh in my lead. I'm on seventh Dude, in the Dude, the first, like, five minutes of that game, it was 2 nothing. Like, nobody hit a shot. It was like clang, clang on both sides. And they're just up and down, up and down, up and down. No one's hitting anything. They can't seem to. And then all of a sudden, this guy hits one, then he hits two, then he hits three. He banked one from, like, 10 feet beyond the arc, and he banked it off the glass. And you're like, oh, no, man. And you just saw it coming. You just, I, I, like, you're watching, and you're like, this dude is going to, if this dude stays hot. if they, And then they doubled him up, and they're, like, they're rolling off picks and everything. And it just, and he was, you know, shot faking. and It was crazy to watch. You could see it happening, like, in real time. It was awesome. Yeah. This Golki guy from Pewaukee. Exciting. Very exciting. Is it Pewaukee? Am I saying it right? Or am saying I saying it right? Wrong? Okay. I thought everybody around here pronounced it Pewaukee, not Pewaukee. I don't know what that is. I well, again, I think maybe he saw the walkie and was like, do I they mean know. Milwaukee? Do I, I don't know. I'll just stumble through this and make it sound right. <laughs> brackets, brackets, brackets. We'll talk to Scott Robert Shaw in a few minutes, and we'll get to Foo Fighters. Please get in contact with us. Listen online. Go to rockmornings.com for all the info. Rock Mornings with Brian, Gene, and Shaw. Oh, you know who you are. You've been doing your daily action. Putting lots of overtime. You need some time off satisfaction. Just think how tough it's been. You've been putting out all that labor. If you use your wit, you can get out quick and do yourself a favor. Friday in effect. And you're pretty beat, I bet. It's been one tough week. You've hit your peak and you've earned your paycheck. But now this week is over, and it's a little fun you're seeking. Your grin is wide, and I know why. Look out, here come the weekend. Know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That weekend's going to be a monster, monster y'all. And speaking of monsters. What about it? What about it? Ghostbusters Frozen Empire in theaters this weekend. Mm -hmm. Many people are already heading out to the theaters to see the film. Is this true? Yes, it's true. Yes, it's true. This man has no dick. That guy's back, William Atherton. So is BFM, Bill F. and Murray, Ernie Hudson, Dan Aykroyd, Paul Rudd, Finn Wolfhard, McKenna Grace. 
Spengler's moving from their farmhouse back to New York City to the firehouse where it all began. An evil spirit escapes from an ancient artifact. The team then has to save the world from a ghost army in a second ice age. The rest of the cast, of course, including William Atherton, a.k.a. Dickless, and Annie Potts. Also, Patton Oswalt and Kamal and wow, Johnny. everybody's in that, oh, huh? Well, why wouldn't you want to be? Yeah. It's Ghostbusters, baby. Ghostbusters Frozen Empire rated PG-13 in theaters this weekend. Also, in theaters this weekend rated R, it's Immaculate, a.k.a. Sydney Sweeney and her giant, beautiful breasts. She plays an American nun who travels to a remote convent in the Italian countryside where she suddenly finds herself pregnant while being told she's fulfilling some sort of biblical prophecy. Ooh, Mother Mary kind of thing? It's rated R, so it's a horror movie. So my guess is it's some devil stuff going on there. Uh, Also, speaking of movies, did you see the Beetlejuice trailer? The juice is loose. Oh, Oh, snap! Teaser trailer came out yesterday for the Beetlejuice film, which comes out later this year. Very excited for that. Movies, movies, movies. As far as new music is concerned, this weekend, you've got JPEG Raw, new album from Gary Clark Jr., fourth album from him. Guy's a stud on the guitar, Shaw. He is. His guests include Stevie Wonder and G. Clinton, George Clinton of the P-Funk. Nice. If you're not watching basketball for some reason this weekend and you want to watch some stuff on television, the boob tube, uh, there's a few things on, including a new... Uh, movie called Shirley on Netflix. It stars Regina King as Shirley Chisholm, a school teacher from Brooklyn who became the first black woman elected to Congress back in 1968 and then made a run at the presidency in 1972, so it's based on a true story. Uh, over on NBC tomorrow night, two-hour special World Figure Skating Championships. Topic. No? <laughs> Just me? American Idol on Sunday nights, also on Sunday night over on OWN. Is that the Oprah Network? I don't know. Does Oprah have a network? It's the 2024 National Women's Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Women have a Hall of Fame? Huh. It's like, for anybody? Uh, also on AMC on Sunday night, Walking Dead, The Ones Who Live, new episode of that. And Fallon's the only one who's new tonight. The rest of them are in repeats, and he's got Alicia Keys and Tony Goldwyn. So there you go. That's what's going on this weekend but ghostbusters frozen empire shaw new ghostbusters film a lot of people going going? to see that one uh no i think we're gonna wait till next week obviously with the basketball and stuff and Mm -hmm. we've got a few other things we want to do this weekend uh didn't want to try to hammer it all into into the same weekend so i think maybe on a weeknight we'll see okay maybe shaw how'd your brackets do yesterday okay well, like uh, most other people, I think I picked Kentucky to win their first round game, and of course that didn't happen. That was the biggest upset of the day yesterday. Yeah, fourteen uh, over a three, and right. Gene apparently picked Oakland. I, I did. Nice. I I literally. You knew that kid was going to be on fire from the three point lane. Huh? Did you know he's from Pewaukee? That kid that was launching the threes for Oakland. Yeah, he's from Pewaukee. Cool. Yeah. So, and this is the craziest stat I've ever heard. I couldn't believe it. I got it. <laughs> you can't get it. It blew over my mind. Right? Shaw, listen to this stat. So not only did he light it up, so he in the game he hit ten of twenty attempts. He had thirty two points, so his only other two points were from the free throw line. He he doesn't shoot within the three point line, only here, from beyond it. Here comes the stat. It's crazy. Thirty four games this season for Oakland that he played in, right? Okay. Of the 333 shots that he took this season while playing for Oakland in 34 games, 325 of them were from beyond the arc. He only took eight shots right. inside. And it was probably, season. it might have been one of those things where he was on the line, you know what I mean, where he didn't even know it. Right. Maybe they called, oh, he had to. He that had was your, a two-pointer. Yeah, he had your toe on the line or something like that. But this, that, to all that guy does is I, shoot I, three points. I read that in warm-ups, he doesn't even take layups. All he does is shoot from beyond the arc. Well, look, dude, if you're a specialist like a punter or, I mean, like a punter's not out there throwing passes in an right. NFL game. The guy's just punting. So if all you do is shoot threes, then just shoot threes. Yeah. And the best part was they tried to double him up. They're moving, you know, they're shifting the defense and everything. And, and, they, and he still. It didn't matter. He was hitting him falling down in every which direction. And he was doing the Jordan shrug and sticking his t- I mean, he was. He was I, feeling it. He was. Good for him. That's cool. I didn't know the Wisconsin connection. Yeah, I don't know how long he lived in Pewaukee or or if he if he just was born there and they moved. But, yeah, they 
He is from Pewaukee originally. I, I'm assuming he went to maybe high school there, and then you what know. What a fun game to watch! Oh I didn't watch God. it, but you guys are making it sound it like was it was exciting, was. actually. Well, and like I said, the first four or five minutes of the game, there was nothing. It was two nothing. Kentucky got a basket, and then they just kept clanking. Everybody, nobody could seem to hit anything, and it was bong, bong, bong. The ball's bouncing all over the place, and you're just like, is anybody going to score? Is it? And you're, you know, like, and and it favored Oakland because you're like, man, the longer that Kentucky yes. goes without scoring. And, and, you know, you're watching the game, and these guys, these guys from Kentucky, I mean, they're massive. You know what I mean? Like, And they have, like, one or two big guys on sure. Oakland. But if they were, you know, and obviously. Uh, so it's uh, the uh, underdog, and it's the great oh, Cinderella sure. Oh, stars. totally. Well, like, the name for the players on Oakland is under the numbers. And that says to me, like, there's a team that's just trying to figure it out, bro. <laughs> you know, they don't have the names at the top by the shoulders. They got them underneath the numbers. And so, yeah, it, it just was a fun game to watch. And Oakland came out on top, and that guy hit all the three-pointers. And 16 more games today. Yeah, starting at 11.15. The women's tournament starts at 10.30 on ESPN2. So, yeah, lots of basketball, Shaw. I love it. Three-way now with Shaw in the newsroom. What else is happening? A 37-year-old from rural Westby has been arrested in connection with a pickup truck stolen and recovered back in August of last year. Mark McKibben was taken into custody after the 2012 GMC was reported stolen on August 8th and found damaged and abandoned a day later. McKibben was taken to the Vernon County Jail and awaits a bail hearing along with formal charges. Vernon County Sheriff Roy Targuson added that more arrests could be coming in the case. Governor Tony Evers has vetoed Republican proposals that would have allowed election observers to get closer to poll workers and required a new post-election audit while signing a bill increasing the penalty for assaulting an election official. Closer, One- like, physically? Yes. Oh, okay. One vetoed bill would have allowed election observers to be within three feet of election workers. Currently, they have to be more than three feet away. Republicans have pushed for years to give observers more power while watching people vote. But Evers, in his veto message, said allowing them to get closer would increase the risk of interference and voter intimidation. La Crosse County will spend $50,000 to help pay for the planned dredging of Lake on Alaska. The county board approved that request last night to use county tax money to pay for the dredging work. Supervisor Gary Podesky says outdoor recreation in the area has become more popular in recent years, partly as a result of the COVID pandemic. During that time, it was very important for people to have some kind of outlet when they couldn't be around people. And rivers and woods and whatever that I mean, this is... Just something, uh, obviously, for people to get out and take advantage of and enjoy. Just one board member voted against the Lake on Alaska request, saying he backs the Lake Project, but many taxpayers do not support the funding. That project is expected to cost close to $400,000. The games are spread enough apart, but Western Wisconsin will be tuned in to both the men's and women's NCAA basketball tournaments today. Of course, the fifth-seeded Badgers will open against number 12 James Madison starting at 840 tonight. Long before that, however, on the women's side, on Alaska Native, Lexi Donarski, an eighth seeded North Carolina, will take on number nine Michigan State. That game begins at 10.30 this morning. Uh, if North Carolina can get by Michigan State, they'll face off against the top seed in the tournament, South Carolina, which is 103 and two losses over the past three seasons. Donarski, North Carolina's defensive and three-point specialist, her first four games for the Tar Heels, she played all 40 minutes. Uh, in all, Donarski's played nine games this season where she did not come off the court for a single second. Second of play. Oh my gosh. Yeah. What? That's She's physically possible? Right? <laughs> Got a text from Kevin who said Pewaukee is near Waukesha, is yeah. the hometown of DJ, TJ, and JJ the Watts. Watts are from Pewaukee. Yeah, yeah, and JJ Watts' birthday is today, by the way. Doc texted in, said uh, that he's over on the southwestern side of Wisconsin today and the roads are, are pretty good. Okay. Also got a text from Jay listening in Kentucky. Said, UK sucks so bad. Coach Cal needs to go. What a disappointment. <laughs> he must have picked Kentucky to go all the way. Well, I think a lot of people did, right? It's, you know, you see the 15s over the twos occasionally. The eights and nines are about the same, anyways. But uh, there was, what, three 11s over sixes yesterday? And then the 14 over the three is a, is a rarity. So, yeah, we'll see what happens today in the upset. Uh, but a lot of people with their brackets busted, except for Gene. Apparently. I'm number seven on my leaderboard. Nice. Look at you. I. My wife showed me yesterday one of her apps. She's like, look, I got a little fire thing. I'm in the top three. It's a little fire thing. And I'm like, I, by the way, I didn't, I, I matched zero games. I was just going to ask you. Nothing. I didn't four, get three it. Numbers? Four, how? My four was... and three. There was no games that ended with four, three. There was a couple of fours, a couple of threes, but there was no three, four. four so I, I didn't win anything Wasn't yet. there 80 games yesterday? Did there, you, well, there'll be another 80 today. So, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping. Fingers crossed. You're watching it. Now, like, it was, 
at one point, I think I think at one point the UK, the Kentucky and, and Oakland game was at 4-3. I said, if it ends now, I win. <laughs> Look, they were shooting two at the beginning. I was like, it might end now. It might come to an end. We'll see. But uh, three-way with Shaw in the newsroom. We'll talk to him again in just a little bit. We got all sorts of other stuff to get to. As I mentioned, Doc, we'll talk to him. Racing report, about 825 right now at Slipknot. Rock mornings, only on 95.7 The Rock. That is the knot. Devil and I. I like Jay in Kentucky. He gets the rules. He says, sorry to text again, but I knew UK wouldn't go far. Jay knows that I can't handle more than a couple of texts from the I same person. I love hearing from Jay from Kentucky. He's we, angry about last night. Well, yeah, obviously UK. He wants Coach Cal to go. He said the high school Sweet 16 is way more entertaining in Kentucky than watching Kentucky in the men's basketball tournament. And then he says, sorry to text again, but I knew UK wouldn't go far. Thanks for being aware, Jay in Kentucky, that I can't handle more than a couple of texts from the same person. I didn't see the game last night, but I just watched the highlight reel, and it's just that kid shooting three-pointers. That's all the highlight reel Right? Is. And he did go to high school in Pewaukee? Yeah, he, okay. he was born and raised there. Uh, Ken just... Out of the blue, text it in. You should Google if corn made Who Let the Dogs Out. It's pretty good. Currently, corn did a cover of Who Let the Dogs Out. I don't know. Thanks, Ken. Maybe maybe on another day. We're talking college basketball here, bro. Uh, thanks again to Kevin, who said that Pewaukee's near Waukesha and his hometown of DJ TJ and JJ Watt. Also got a text from Chad earlier. Wanted to do some Pantera. We'll try to get to that in just a bit. Guns and Roses on the way. More from Scott Robert Shaw. Doc will join us to talk racing at about 825. It looks like the snow is done for the entire area right now, but we are looking at some more over the weekend. It was it's slick in spots, so be careful. They had salt trucks out earlier, said. but it's not I mean it's not that impactful. It wasn't like I woke up this morning and looked out, I was like, oh, it's good. It's fine. <laughs> Get to that Guns N' Roses next. Rock mornings. Monday to Friday, six to nine. Rock mornings with Brian and Gene. That of course Guns N' Roses, sweet child oh mine. Refresh my memory about your little uh, incident in the alleyway with the big wheels. Uh, we had a race. Was this, this while this you were was, drinking? Was there alcohol involved? Yes. It was a Friday night. Copious amounts of alcohol, uh, would you no, say? No, no, I wouldn't say was that. Was it a wine alcohol night or was it a oh, booze probably. or a beer? I'm or? sure it was wine. I, it was a Friday night. I know that. We had plans to hang out, and then the kids were little at the time, and we had a lot of big wheels and green machines and those kinds of things, and it seemed like a good idea to have a race, and it was raining, and so everything was kind of wet. Slick. There was kind of a spin out at the end of the alley. Easy to to do a, a maneuver? Yeah. Uh, like okay. I, I was... Oh, I, I, I was... I was well, on and- fire, Brian, is the situation. I was I was way ahead. Her little legs, she couldn't even keep... The, uh, oh, this Lori's is, so small, she fits yes. into a big wheel Wasn't like a, a child. It was my friend, yeah. my girlfriend, but she's... Who's it, like Shaw's size, very size tiny. five one, yeah. and weighs so about 40 pounds triple I wet. completely dominated that evening in the big wheel race. Plus, I had some good spins at the end and some, you know, I mean, if it was on video... You'd probably have it on Rewind. I mean, you wouldn't be able to stop. It'd be going viral on TikTok? I am certain that okay. that's how it looks in my memory. Well, these two friends from kindergarten are not trying to race each other drunkenly in an alleyway while it's raining. They're trying to set a world record. Doing what? Heading off on a very unique road trip to raise money for a no-kill shelter. Aww. They love power wheels growing up, so they're trying to set the world record for longest journey by toy car. They each have their very own, and they're driving. Like a little Barbie car kind of thing? And they're driving 500 miles down the coast of Florida from Jacksonville to Key West. Oh, that just sounds like fun. Come on. Well, that's yeah. a good time. We used to ride around with toy cars as kids, and we've always wanted a Guinness World Record attempt, so we're like, this would be a fun way to like kind of honor our childhood. It originally oh, yeah. came as kind of a laughable idea, and then it kind of turned into this like actual thing that we decided to do. Now, these are not big wheels. I believe these are like, like the Barbie cars yeah, that have a battery in them, uh-huh. so the car does the work, and you're going five miles an Dude, hour. Uh, okay. 
Cassie, Aaron, and Lauren are attempting a 500-mile drive down the coast of Florida to earn the Guinness World Record for longest distance by toy cars. Their journey began uh, in Duval County. Cassie and Lauren apparently didn't want to use their last name, started their journey at Friendship Fountain in Jacksonville, and will end at Southernmost Point Bowie in Key West. Uh, with occasional assistance from Cassie's boyfriend, Brandon, they expect to attempt uh, the attempt to take about two <laughs> two months They've been friends since kindergarten in their days uh, in New Jersey when they went to kindergarten together where they rode, of course, battery-powered toy cars throughout the neighborhood. Uh, and they both have a love of animals. And, and uh, yeah, you can follow their, by the way, their progress. And you can also pitch in by going to their website, V-T-H-E-Earsocks, E-A-R-S-O-C-K-S dot oh. com. They've been dealing with a lot of rain themselves, by the way. Raising money to save animals. Encouraging donations by giving shout outs on social media to their top donors with more than a million followers on social media platforms, uh, including TikTok, YouTube and Instagram. The duo has raised more than six hundred dollars during the first 24 hours of their journey. They aim to reach about 10 grand. They will then donate that to the Red Panda, uh, the Red Panda Network in Nepal, the Costa Rica Animal Rescue Center and the Save a Fox Rescue in Minnesota, along with the World Bird Sanctuary in Missouri and a couple of others. But. Cassie owns a clothing company called the Ear Socks, where 10% of the proceeds from the sales of that, uh, including shirts, stickers, and hoodies, go to the Best Friends Animal Society to help end all kill shelters by 2025. And so they're donating even more with this goofy little fun toy car journey that they're taking. I want to spend two months driving a toy car with my friend down the coast of Florida. Well, if you were their age and didn't have a lot of responsibility <laughs> in life, you could probably do that. <laughs> but now that you have kids and a mortgage and a life, you can't do that. Oh, anymore. man. Those days are over. So what you get is wine drunk in the alleyway and ride a big green, big green machine race in the <laughs> Yeah, in the rain. That's what you get. Thanks. You're welcome. Rockmornings.com to listen online, to get in touch with us, check out our daily podcast. We will talk to Shaw in just a few. Rock Mornings with Brian, Gene, and Shaw. Rock Mornings with Brian and Gene. Scott Robert Shaw in the newsroom. Bad news, happy music later on on a Friday. That's usually when we're jam-packed full of good stuff. Any uh, previews? Any early uh, early? Yeah, there's a woman, a woman in Iowa who claims to be a witch <laughs> okay. who set a stranger's porch on fire. Please tell me you saw the mugshot. I did. It was precious. It might be the greatest mugshot of all time. Better than Nick Nolte. It is. Does she look like a witch? All I can say is you got to see it. I can't do it justice. Mm -hmm. We'll have more on that (laughs) during Bad News with Happy Music. What's happening right now? Well, the snow has largely come to an end in our area, but our winter weather advisory remains in place. Some areas could see another two inches of snow, but it looks like it's largely coming to an end. Uh, Some roads may be slippery in spots this morning. Another snowstorm is heading toward our area with the possibility of another two to four inches of snow, possibly mixed with rain, on Sunday. Part of the city of La Crosse's plan for dealing with homelessness is to shut down homeless encampments. The city has now started that process, kicking the homeless out of the new River Point District near the Friendship Gardens. The homeless have been living there for months after getting kicked out of other places where they sought shelter, including parking ramps, parks, and under the Cass Street Bridge. The city is not providing housing alternatives for the unsheltered. Mayor Mitch Reynolds says it's up to them to find a place to live. Reynolds says these squatters must go because of the risk of spring flooding in that area. One year has passed since Doug La Follett suddenly left his job as Wisconsin Secretary of State just three months into a new term. State law allowed Governor Tony Evers to appoint Sarah Godlewski to fill the post for the remaining three years of the term. Republicans insisted there should be a special election for Secretary of State and recently passed a bill requiring special elections or a Senate vote to fill a vacant statewide office. The governor has now vetoed that bill along with others affecting Wisconsin's elections. The Justice Department has announced a sweeping antitrust lawsuit against Apple, accusing the tech giant of engineering an illegal monopoly in smartphones that boxes out competitors, stifles innovation, and keeps prices artificially high. The lawsuit, filed with 16 state attorneys general, including Wisconsin's, is just the latest example of aggressive antitrust enforcement by an administration that has also taken on Google, Amazon, and other tech giants with the stated goal of making the digital universe more fair, innovative, and competitive. Just weeks after one big riverboat company announced it was shutting down, the city of La Crosse has found another company which will bring river cruises to the area. The American Cruise Lines are planning 10 stops in La Crosse for the 2024 season after
after being away from the market for a few years. They'll fill a gap left by the cancellation of the American Queen Paddle Wheeler Cruises. Jim Flotmeyer of the La Crosse Park Department says there won't be any double stops here by American Cruise Lines and the Viking Line on the same day. But there are some dates this year where there are a couple boats staying overnight. And uh, there's, I think American Cruise Lines is staying late on Thursdays a couple times because they want to take in moon tunes. The American Cruise Lines website says its boats will mainly stop in La Crosse on the trips going downriver from St. Paul. Three-way with Shaw in the newsroom. Got a brush off your car this morning, but the roads should be good. Yep. At least here in our area. All the way through the valley, it looks like they're decent. Looks like it's over now. I don't yeah. see any flurries I'm not coming any down. Snow falling. There's some uh, just flurries. It looks like in Eau Claire, but uh, another round of it on Sunday. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, it looks like. Inches. Yeah, it looks like Sunday might be more serious. Uh, got a text from James in Altoona. Does anybody remember "Take Out the Gunman" by Chevelle? Can we kick the morning's ass with anything by them? Of course, I can play some Chevelle. We'll get to that here in just a couple minutes. Got no problem with that. Tell you what, Shaw. I think I was right about Otani. Yeah, you mentioned yesterday. What if this guy, uh, the interpreter, was just a fall guy, and Otani was the one place? Who, that? who was it? Michael Irvin, right? I think it was, or was it Chris Carter? It was a former NFL wide receiver that uh, famously said something about when you're the guy from the neighborhood who makes it in the NFL or in rap or in whatever you're doing. You know what I mean? Like they come for you or what? And you have a group of friends that are you have to stay loyal to, right? They are part of your crew. You need a guy in that group that's a fall guy, essentially, right? A guy who, if you do something bad, so which wrong. which you might do, right? Which we look. There's a million instances of that. I'm not telling you anything you don't already know. You Ray have Lewis. to have a guy who's willing to take the rap, Ray Lewis style, right? Mm-hmm. Like Ray Lewis probably killed a guy, and then this other dude got the, took the blame for mm-hmm. it, right? Yep. Well, I said that about Otani because the guy changed his story, and that was I, what I was focusing on was that, and, you know, look, language barrier, things are different, different kind of, the whole nine yards, right? You take that all into, into, into account, but he changed his story. And then you find out that Otani – was sending the money directly to the bookie. Yes. As opposed to giving the money to the guy who was apparently in debt. Which I read yesterday was a, he was afraid he was going to gamble that away if Which, he didn't pay the guy, the bookie directly. As a, as a human being who also is addicted <laughs> to gambling, Shaw, I can understand where that comes from. Okay. If I have a gambling debt and you're going to give me $1,000 to pay that and it's in cash, I might look at it and go, you know, well, well, I could I, probably that. put this in a machine and turn it into two grand, right. pay off the debt, and then I got $1,000. Well, the next thing you know, you put it in the machine and you're out of $1,000, and right. now you're out of, you're, you know. It, it, although this was $4.5 million he paid to the bookie instead. Well, of- <laughs> and then there was the whole thing where it sounded like the the interpreter was getting it illegally out of his account, which wasn't the case either. Otani was giving the money, so like so he wasn't he stealing the money from him. While and Otani like married this woman, kind of hush hush out of mm-hmm. nowhere, and the rumor is that he married her, so she can't testify against him. Like she knew all this, like it just kind of came out of nowhere, like last week that all of a sudden he's getting married and there, what, you know, like. All I'm saying, Shaw, is that where there's smoke, there's fire. Mm -hmm. And this thing's got a lot more going on than what everybody seems to think is going on. Yeah, the IRS is leading the criminal investigation right now. And Major League Baseball says it is monitoring uh, the situation but is not investigating the situation. They're going to wait for the facts to come out before baseball decides what it will do. Dude, he is like LeBron to baseball. Oh, for sure. What LeBron is to basketball, he is to baseball Mm -hmm. right now. And this would be massive so much bigger than Pete Rose. I mean, Pete Rose was a great player. Don't get me wrong. Hall of Famer, certainly, by his stats alone. But this guy's, in terms of his overall global... It's global, yeah. I mean, this is crazy. Is it... Do you know, is it... And I I shouldn't put you on the spot like this. uh, Do you know, is it legal to gamble on sports uh, overseas in in where he's from, Japan? Yeah, I don't know. Although he does... Somebody said, I don't know who said this, but the the bets were placed on international soccer and not baseball. Right. He wasn't... According to the reports I read, there was no bets made on baseball or on his games. It was all like NCAA, NBA, and some soccer games as well. But... Sure. All I know is that I... I, First it ball... Well, this first story was that he willingly gave the money covering his friend's debt. Then a Which day I later, Which he I says, get. I was completely unaware that the money was being transferred and that there when was When the story anybody. changes, you know that that there's a lot of lying going on, trying to cover tracks. Something's happening. Rock Morning on 95.7 The Rock.
That is Rockfest music from Chevelle by request for James in Altoona. Said anybody remember Take Out the Gunman by Chevelle? Can we kick the morning's ass with anything by them? We just did. You're welcome. The exact song you mentioned. James also said, is this Otani deal an opening to lift Pete Rose's ban? I would say no. I don't think Pete Rose is ever going to get into the Hall of Fame in his lifetime unless he gets on his knees in front of Major League Baseball and grovels at their feet. That's what they want. That's what the baseball writers want. That's what MLB wants. He's never been very apologetic or humble about the whole thing. I think he's admitted it, right? But I don't think they care. They want him to be really sorry for it. Bend the knee, so to speak. So back to this. Uh, really also, don't... real quick, to the back yeah. to the Otani stuff. Yes, that's what I mean. Uh, I got a text from Doc who said it was Chris Carter, and Doug also texted me and said Chris Carter said that he actually advised young players to have one, a.k.a. a fall guy. He then had to walk back the comment, which doesn't <laughs> surprise me. Well, he said it on national television, too. He said on, I, I believe it was on national TV, that he said that, you know, look. Get a fall guy? Yeah, if you're going to be, you know, young and doing all this crazy stuff, you got to have a guy that's going to take the rap for you in case you get in trouble because you can't be, you're, you, you know, you got a lot of people you got to, you know, take care of when you're making millions and millions of dollars and you're the, you're the guy out of the group that's doing all that. So this is under federal investigation. The place was raided. I mean, it. Oh, it's it's yeah, and this is an it's illegal. Going on for well, it's a, an illegal bookie, and apparently the bookie was making bets in Vegas casinos, and they found all the you know. It's there's so much going on with this. There's so much information about it right now. How how can you how can you think that it was just as simple as this guy and this dude who's working for him, his interpreter, right? Who's yes. his friend and has been his interpreter. I don't know for what six seven years or something like that. I think I read thirteen. Okay, two thousand three. He makes like three hundred grand a year. Eleven years. You can't get into four and a half million dollars worth of gambling debts making three hundred grand a year. You cannot do it unless you're stealing money or you hit big on a on a bet and then you turn it around and you. But even then. You know, then then you're they're putting markers on you in the Vegas casinos or at the sports you know betting sites or whatever. Four and a half million. How do you get that? That, that it just reeks of Shohei Otani knew or was involved well, in some way, shape, or form. I read yesterday that he paid it off directly to the book, and then now says that he was unaware. And if all of a sudden your friends need four and a half million dollars, aren't That's, you asking what what for? And by the way, you asked about online betting in South Korea, heavily heavily regulated by the government. Okay. So only a limited number of well, licensed operators are allowed to offer online sports betting services. My thought was that it was something they're accustomed to in their country, and then they come here, and maybe they don't. And I'm sure that someone, think, you know, agents and manage. I mean, you got to assume Otani's probably got what a, 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 oh, a yeah. cast of a thousand people around him. You know, like managers and people that work for him and stuff like that. People that you know do things and, and handle all that stuff. And so, yeah, I there just, are so many potential crimes here, state and federal, big dangers with violating anti gambling laws uh, as they're written and organized crime and the or. <laughs> it, yeah, money laundering. I mean, it sounds like there's that. That is a lot of money for a guy who makes three hundred grand to get into trouble with four and a half million. Unless he was stealing it from Otani, but he wasn't because Otani gave him the money. And again, he didn't give him the money; he gave it he to the wired the bookie. it to the. Yeah. Well, and there's. Do you know what it takes to wire that kind of money? I mean, five hundred grand. I mean, all the different codes and the different, sec, you know, all the security verifications and all. It's not just like here's a Western Union. You know what I mean? Like. I'll get you a traveler's check. No, four and a half million. Well, yeah. So it's just, yeah. There's, there's a lot going on there. Uh, Rock mornings with Brian and Gene. Uh, visit us online at rockmornings.com. Of course, March Madness. Enjoy the weekend with all the games. Wisconsin plays tonight. Marquette plays this afternoon. Girls start at ten thirty this morning on ESPN two. The men okay. continue at about eleven fifteen on on CBS. So yeah, it's going to be a full weekend of basketball. Come on, three and four. Watching all the games, just I'm like, come on, come on, just one, just give me one. No, 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 not yet. Didn't get any? I thought three and four would be good. Eighty three, seventy four. I'm number seven in my bracket, my online brackets. Yeah. All right, we'll get to Mammoth and back to Scott Robert Shaw in the newsroom in just a bit. Rock mornings with Brian, Jean, and Shaw. Rock mornings with Brian, Jean, and Shaw. That of course, Mammoth. I'm all right. Wolfgang Van Halen, Shaw. Mm-hmm. I like your sound. I thought maybe he'd be at Rockfest this summer. I thought so, too. A lot of guessing going on, obviously, before the lineup dropped a few months ago. But it's been out for a while, and then it snowed, and it'll be July, and 
Yeah. Probably not going to snow. Man, it's pretty dreary out shop. Very, they just very sold, gray. They just sold out of another section of tickets. I just saw it on their on their social media yesterday. I can't remember which tickets they just sold out of. But, yeah, tickets and camping uh, going rapidly for Rockfest this summer. So I'll go to rock-fest.com for all the info on that. And uh, get ready because this July, man, it's going to be a hell of a good mm-hmm. time with Shine Down and Jelly Roll and 30 Seconds to Mars. They got a few pit passes, I believe, available still. And for some of the bands, the Who's going to be there, Mongolian Death Metal. Yeah, you ever right. seen a Mongo- you ever yeah. been? <laughs> you ever been to Mongolia? <laughs> you, ever no, the, you ever been in a mosh pit at a Mongolian Death Metal show? Strangely, no. <laughs> I'm excited to see what they do, too. I, I, You know, a lot of people, maybe not a lot, but several people have, have complained uh, about the lack of moshing at Rockfest. Uh, some of these artists oh, yeah, I... are, are a little heavier yeah. than others. Sure. Um, and I believe they used to have moshing. And then, of course, people get injured and things happen. And you you kind of want to, you know, make sure everybody's safe and has a good time. And, and, and uh, I know that uh, there have been people that have been sort of clamoring for a space to do the moshing okay. or uh, the ability to do that. And what's cool about Rockfest and what's cool about Wade uh, and the people there is that they listen to their fans. You know what I mean? It's not like this massive festival where you can't see or talk to Wade, the guy that organizes and runs the whole damn thing. I mean, he's running around there the whole entire mm-hmm. weekend. You see him. And he reaches out on social media and, and, and talks to the people that go and wants to get feedback and wants to hear their input and wants to, you know, make sure that everyone's having a good time. And they have been discussing maybe bringing back moshing in some of the areas over there at Rockfest this year. Are you, were it the GA Rockstar packages yes, that you I saw were that referring yesterday, to? Yeah. Okay. There are limited pit passes, as you mentioned, but the rock star packages, it sounds like, are gone. Rock-fest.com for everything Rockfest. Right now, Shaw in the newsroom for another three-way. What's happening? Well, it was a hero's welcome for hundreds of employees who work at two hospitals in the Chippewa Valley. Those hospitals, Sacred Heart in Eau Claire and St. Joseph's in Chippewa Falls, will close today. They stopped admitting patients weeks ago. Yesterday, members of the public showed up outside the hospitals, with many of them with signs, shouting words of encouragement and offering their thanks for those long time doctors and nurses. An the, honor walk, is that what they yeah, call it? Yeah. yeah, the closures will more than double drive times and put pressure on two remaining hospitals in the Eau Claire area that are already at capacity. The closures impact more than 1,000 employees. Well, now you got these two massive empty buildings, too. Like, right? Is there any plans for those buildings? Well, and so many people trying to... That are made to be hospitals? Right. I mean, there are other hospitals in the area that are going to try and pick up some of the slack. There was talk that somebody would basically buy those buildings and then rent them out to another medical provider. But all of that is still in flux. So uh, a dredging project at Lake on Alaska will be assisted by some money from La Crosse County. Yesterday, county board members voted to spend $50,000 from a special county fund to remove sediment from the lake. David Hunt was the only board member to oppose the spending. Hunt says he fully supports the dredging, but he's against how the project is being funded. Well, we're going to have to dredge that lake again, and it's going to not cost three million. It's probably going to cost five million. So every nickel that we can get in there is important. And uh, like I say, the taxpayers that I represent are up in arms about this. The dredging would help improve access to Lake on Alaska and the Mississippi and promote the growth of fish there. The lineup of performers for this year's Summerfest has been announced. The massive festival, billed as the country's largest music festival, will offer 140 headliners from many different genres across three weekends starting on June 20th. Among this year's headliners are Keith Urban, the Goo Goo Dolls, Maroon 5, as well as Seether, Buck Cherry, and REO Speedwagon. A nearly $1 billion Mega Millions jackpot is up for grabs, Ooh. offering the prospect of instant riches for That's some nice. lucky player after more than three months without a big winner. It's got to num- happen. Numbers will be drawn tonight for what is an estimated $977 million it's Mega happening. Millions prize. That jackpot oh. ranks as the 10th largest in U.S. lottery history. Exactly. The prize is for a sole winner who chooses to be paid through an annuity. Winners almost always uh. opt for a cash payment, however, which for tonight's drawing would be an estimated $461 million. I cannot well, forget this today. I Mega Millions to today and then Powerball tomorrow. Powerball tomorrow, and there's $675 million, I think, in Powerball. Can you imagine winning them both? <laughs> yes. One on Friday, one or on anything. Saturday. Anything, yeah. <laughs> that would be nice. I mean, four people won a million dollars just recently. No one wins yeah. the jackpot, but the, there's mm. four people out there that, didn't, that now mm. have a million dollars. Wow. That won a million dollars, but before didn't, taxes, didn't yes. necessarily get it. <laughs> so, okay, more, I'm more okay like with that. Uh, I'm not more complaining. like four hundred grand, right? After taxes About, and everything, yep. yeah. yeah. 
I'm uh, again. I, I I would take it. Yes, but that's why. That's when you take the lump sum. You know what I mean? Is when it's. It's ten years worth of work. <laughs> yeah, right. It's a decade job. <laughs> Three-way with Shaw in the newsroom today is World Water Day. Like drink water? I mean, I don't know. Love water. Have have water, drink water, bathe in water. Go swimming. Stand out in the water. It's also Talk Like William Shatner Day. His birthday today, Shaw. He's 93. Wow. The Shat. So instead of saying sabotage, yes. you say sabotage. <laughs> sabotage. Strange new world. You say sabotage. I say sabotage. I mean, get a life, people. It's just a show, right? Isn't that great? Sabotage. I don't say sabotage. You say sabotage. I say sabotage. Sabotage. I don't say sabotage. I say sabotage. You say. I love how he also tells the person what you say. Right. He's like, no, 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 no. You say sabotage. I say. Yeah. I mean, it's just a TV show. Get a life. <laughs> so funny. Talk like William Shatner. Can you give me a William Shatner show? Can you give me one? Uh, I was never a real Star Trek guy, so uh, probably not. Did he have? He didn't have the rap album, did he? Yes. Was, was well, there... he had a lot of albums. Yeah, he had a lot of albums. Can't imagine they were that good, but he did. <laughs> yeah. Ninety-three today. I just like to say, get a life, will you, people? <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean for, for crying out loud, it's it's just a TV show. <laughs> Good times. So if someone starts talking to you all funny in the office today, that might be where it's coming from. FYI, talk like William Shatner Day. Oh, he does have a lot of albums. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's prolific. <laughs> We're not going to hear from... Any of his albums, by the way. Shatner Claus. Rock Mornings on your rock station. Rock, rock Mornings with Brian and Gene. That is Disturbed. Got Lincoln Park in a few. If you need something, get in touch with us. Rockmornings.com. Going to get to Doc's Racing Report at about 825. Not going to be doing any racing this weekend in the, in the area. Not around here, at least. Also going to get to Bad News, Happy Music, and our daily check-ins. So please visit us online at rockmornings.com to get in touch with us. You can also listen online on the website. You can check out our daily podcast as well in case you missed something. Mm-hmm. Want to go back and hear us talking about Who'd You Rather from earlier this week? Luxury I'm sticking, items. I'm, what? Luxury items. I'm sticking with taxes. Again, I think the, the mental health improvement you get from knowing that you only have to pay 1% of your taxes for the rest of your life must be well worth its weight in gold. I'm taking the gold. Luxury items. <laughs> but you're not. You're selling them. You're not keeping them. <laughs> profit. Max profit. Uh, that Lincoln Park is coming up in just a couple of minutes. Again, visit rockmornings.com to get in touch with us. More of your rock Wait. mornings coming up in just a bit. Lincoln Park with crawling. Rock mornings with Brian and Gene. J.J. Watts, <laughs> 35. We are just talking about him. Retired from the NFL. Very altruistic, philanthropic, if you will. Mm-hmm. Gives a lot of money to charity, helps out. All around good guy. Yeah. And uh, he's 35 years young today. From Pewaukee. Yeah, but that's we were just mentioning that this morning. Reese Witherspoon, 48 years old. Do you have a resume? It's pink. And it's in it. I think it gives it a little something extra. Legally blondes and likes to name drop herself when she gets pulled over for DUI. Do you know who I am? Do you know who I am? Do you? This is going to be all over the news. Yeah, because you're dropping the, do you know who I am? <laughs> that's why. She's 48, by the way. Okay. Keegan Michael Key, one half of Key and Peel, is 53 years young. D nice. Is there a D nice? Do you mean Denise? Son of a <laughs> Keegan Michael Key, 53 years old today. You done messed up, A.A. Ron! That's him. Matthew Modine plays Dr. Martin Brenner on Stranger Things. Apparently, he's going to marry. He's going to, like, uh, do the. Officiating? Officiating at uh, Eleven's wedding. She's getting married. 
Well, it's Millie Bobby Brown. Yeah. She's getting married. And, and he's, he's doing the... He's officiating it. Really? Yeah, her papa from uh, the show is officiating. <laughs> but Matthew Modine is, uh, of course, 65. He also was Loud and Swain back in the day in Vision Quest and Private Joker in Full Metal Jacket. Private Joker, why did you join my beloved cult? Sir, kill! kill! Sir! So you're a killer? Sir, yes, sir! Let me see your war face. Sir? Sir! You got a war face? Ah! That's a war face! Now let me see your war face! Ah! Love that movie. Matthew Modine, 65. Our guy from CNN, Wolf Blitzer, is 76 today. We're going to Orlando next week. I'll tell you one of the issues that concerns me, Jerry. That's where they're going. Isn't that good enough for you? No, what's good enough for me is it's not a game, Jake. And when we do that, Jake, you're going to have a lot of enthusiasm. Wolf, Wolf, I am sorry. (laughs) I'm looking at the sign over there. Uh, do you have confidence in the, uh, in the way Look, Hillary? Jake, all I can tell you is... So you, have, you, you think they Look, should go Jake, I don't, you're asking me questions. What do I know? <laughs> uh, Bernie Sanders. <laughs> he even got corrected, and he still kept calling him Jake. Jake. And he has a very unique name. It's not like Dan or Steve or John. It's a, It Wolf stands Blitzer. out. Wolf. <laughs> and he couldn't remember. He just kept calling him Jake. Wolf Blitzer is 76. Shatner, as we found out earlier, 93. Of my friend, I can only say this. Oh, God. Every time. Of all the souls I have encountered in my travels. This part right here. His was the most. Oh! Human. Gets me every time, Gene. I know it does. Oh, tingly. Getting tingly over that one. On this day in 1894, 130 years ago, hockey's very first Stanley Cup championship was played. The Montreal Amateur Athletic Association defeated the Ottawa Capitals 3-1. As they say in hockey, let's do that hockey. (laughs) Here before every game. Right before they do the national anthem. Let's do that hockey. Let's do that hockey. 1963, 61 years ago today, the Beatles released their debut album, Please Please Me. Containing the title track. Oh, that's a good one. Love Me Do. I saw her standing there and. Twist and shout. Might have heard it. Yeah. Those guys, they did okay. It's a good album. Also on this day in 1985, 39 years ago, Wendy's firing Clara Peller, the Where's the Beef lady. Because she did some commercials for Prego Pasta Sauce, where she apparently had found the beef. Where's the beef? The beef was in the Prego Pasta Sauce. Ooh, and Wendy's double was dipping, like... Double dipping, can't do that. Wendy's is like, yo, man. Yeah, where the beef? What did they say? 33%? Wendy saw their 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 sales go up 33% during that ad campaign with, yep. with Clara Peller. 1985, very same day, a couple movies in theaters right across the hall from each other. One of them was Friday the 13th, A New Beginning... I think this was five, four or five. It wasn't good. No. No. <laughs> Tommy Jarvis, who had killed him in the previous one, which was played by Corey Haim Feldman. Corey Feldman, like, comes back as he's older to face Jason again. I don't know. It wasn't good. Also, this one, this movie was much better. 1985 in theaters, right across the hall from Friday the 13th, The New Beginning, The Last Dragon. Am I the meanest? Sure no. Am I the prettiest? Sure no. Am I the baddest mofo low down around this time? Sure no. But who am I? Sure no. Who am I? Sure no. I can't hear you. Sure no. Shogun. Harlem. The Shogun of Harlem. Hell yeah. Yeah? Bruce Leroy, The Last Dragon. No. I've mentioned it many uh, yeah, times. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm familiar. Vanity's in it? Yeah. I'm going to go home and watch that today. I'm not watching Show basketball. Enough. Show enough. Show enough. enough. Hell yeah. 33 years ago today, 1991. Teenage, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Part 2, The Secret of the Ooze in theaters, starring Kevin Nash as the Super Shredder. Are you going to watch that one, too? Not really. No. It is the one with Vanilla Ice, though. Ninja, ninja, rap. Ninja, ninja, rap. Go, ninja, go, ninja, go. <laughs> no? Vanilla Ice, yeah. Yeah, they uh, they fight in a club with Rock City and Bebop. And Vanilla Ice is... Laying down the Oh, yeah, tracks. the funky beats. Yeah, uh-huh. Hell, yeah. 
1994, 30. I cannot believe this album is 30 years old. Their seventh studio album, Pantera, Far Beyond Driven. Dropping my favorite Pantera song of all time, Slaughtered. Got in trouble at Rockfest last year for this one. So what happened was is, <laughs> you know at Rockfest where we're at, right? Yes. And in our booth last year, we didn't have the TV feed for whatever reason from the stage, so we didn't really know what was going on. And you can kind of hear stuff on the stage in between the bands, but you really don't know what's happening. And we got back from, from like, and getting ready for Pantera, we went back to the booth and we crank slaughtered, like as loud as it could go on our speakers. And while we were doing that, unbeknownst to us, because we were in the, in the booth jamming out, they had a veteran up on stage singing the national anthem. Yeah. And a woman came down and was very upset with and us. And, it down and I immediately, immediately shut it off and we apologized prophetically. Yeah. And, uh, all that stuff. Uh, no disrespect meant. None just at all. What's, out. Trust me. I ha- if I, You know me. Yeah, I, I'm I, a national I, anthem guy, and I felt so bad about it. But, yeah, Pantera is far beyond driven in stores on this day in 1994. 30 years old. Did these speakers go to 11? They, they do. did. They did. And 22 years ago today in 19, uh, excuse me, in 2002, Wesley Snipes always bet on black in Blade 2. Do not know you are f-ing with Oof. Yeah. Blade 2. Did not know. Oh, they found out, though. <laughs> that was the one with the weird vampires where their whole jaw opened up, and then they had this little, like, little sucker thing that came out. Yeah, like his jaw split in the middle, yeah, and it yeah, opened yeah. And then open up, and it wrap around your face, and then the little sucker would suck all the blood out. Like, yeah. <gasps> uh, uh. Ah. Yeah. Ron Perlman was in that one. There you go. Some birthdays and pop culture dates. Go listen to Pantera's Far Beyond Driven. 30 years old. <laughs> We're going to hear more from that album in just a couple minutes. And we'll talk to Scott Robert Shaw. Rock mornings. On air. <laughs> online. On the app. One more, Shaw. We going to make it or what? We're going to make it. What you got going on this weekend? You just going to watch basketball? I'm going to watch a lot of basketball. I think that's what I'm going to do as well. I got to watch The Last Dragon today because it came out on this day in 85. Bruce Leroy, mm-hmm. Last Dragon. Mm-hmm. Seen it. Looking for the glow. Love that movie. So good. Mm-hmm. Also got to go home and listen to Pantera's Far Beyond Driven. Because that came out on this day in 94. 30 years 30 ago. 30 years ago. Oh, my God. How is that album 30? <laughs> Unbelievable. I'm going to uh, track meet tomorrow at UWL Inside. There's oh, a big thing. it's big, inside. Yeah, I know, right? And uh, family visiting from out of from Minneapolis. Hopefully they'll travel safe with. So the if you're looking for there. a restaurant in downtown, is that an all weekend thing? This That's trip? an all weekend thing. All right. So we had wrestling. We had <laughs> the what the dart tournament or the pool tournament There's, a couple weeks ago. I mean, it's just it's every a country weekend. show at the center this oh, weekend too. Yeah, so bro, country. I, that's not country. It's a bunch of douchebags in glittery jeans. <laughs> well, I'm just telling you. There's people. There's going to be people. Shaw. Yep. Good for downtown. Mm-hmm. Good for the city. I mean, think yeah. all the hotels are going to look solid. Glad I live on the way south side, far away from the <laughs> shop. Stay away. Right now, a three-way, what do you got? Uh, Stellantis is recalling nearly 285,000 Dodge and Chrysler sedans because the side airbag inflators can explode with too much force and hurl metal fragments at drivers and passengers. Yo, that's not good. The recall covers airbag inflators of Dodge Chargers and Chrysler 300s from the 2018 through 2021 model years. The automaker says moisture may get into the inflators due to a manufacturing defect and cause corrosion and cracks. They say there have been no reports of injuries. Dealers will replace both side airbag modules owners will be notified starting may 3rd speaking of airbags mm-hmm. i was doing some work at home the other day yeah. and I, I always put something on the tv just in the background have it on whatever and i was on netflix and they got neighbors the movie yes with the frat that moves next to yes. seth rogan and yeah. his wife and that's kids hilarious and- yeah i totally forgot about the airbag part i don't remember the airbag part so when they finally decide to, to fight each other back and forth and mm-hmm. the, you know 
the the college kids take the airbags out of their car okay. and install one of them in his seat at work. And he, oh, no. He's on the phone with the <laughs> wife, and she just notices that the airbags are missing, so she calls him, and he's like, oh, God, what are they doing? And he goes to sit on his office chair and pow, he's just <laughs> right up through the ceiling. And then his friend, the guy, the other guy, the, 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 the best friend who helps him with all their shenanigans, he's in a cubicle like, 200 feet away and all that like five seconds later pow he goes through the ceiling <laughs> and then he goes home and there's another one in his chair oh my god i forgot funny. how funny those are i <laughs> dude those videos of mechanics putting i could watch those all i know they're dangerous i know they could be harmful but i don't care it's so effing funny <laughs> Watching someone sit down unsuspectedly on a on an airbag and go l- get launched to Pluto <laughs> is so hilarious to me. Have you seen these videos? No, but they sound hilarious. So a lot of t- it's like shenanigans at a at a mechanic shop. You know, you take the airbag out and you hook it up, and the guy's sitting there having a smoke after a long hard day. He's all greased up, and he's got you know his greasy old uniform on, and it pow, <laughs> just right in the ass, and he's all oh, just into orbit, man, and. <laughs> The body goes, Whoa! Oh, my God. I forgot how funny it was. Yeah. Uh, the Sorry. Sorry. It's okay. That was worth it. Uh, the sun is setting on Stumpy, the gnarled old cherry tree that has become a social media phenom. This year's cherry blossom festivities in Washington will be the last for Stumpy and more than 100 other cherry trees that will be cut down as part of a multi-year restoration starting in early summer. Crews will begin working to replace the crumbling seawall around the Jefferson Memorial that has the highest concentration of cherry trees. The work has been long overdue. Uh, the twice, uh, they say that they will replace the trees that they cut down uh, by planting 277 new ones. Who is Jack Golke? That's what the world wants to know. After witnessing one of the most impressive shooting performances ever in the NCAA tournament, Golke, playing for Oakland College in Michigan, nailed 10 three-pointers yesterday to help his team topple third-seeded Kentucky. Golke is a Wisconsin native. Yeah. He grew up and played high school basketball in Pewaukee, but he was not recruited by Badger coach Greg Gard or any other school for that matter. He ended up playing at Tiny Hillsdale, a private school in Michigan, before taking his final year of eligibility to Oakland and making the most of it. Golke's team will next face off against North Carolina State tomorrow night. Here's Golke again, putting up a three and hitting, looking for a foul as well, doesn't get one. Golke, here he is again, putting up a three. Goodness. Is anybody got fouled again? Here's Golke, that's a deep three. It's gone! 12 points already. Now there's a good switch by Wagner. Here he is again. Oh, oh Golke comes off the screen, fakes the three, now he'll take it. <laughs> yes, sir! Great close out. Right out on goal key. He'll take it anyway. Oh. Why not? Why not? Goal key makes it in. I think I'll just do this. From Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I love the fact the guy didn't know how to say Pewaukee. He's like, from P- uh, uh, Close. Dude, up. the one off the glass was crazy, right. too. Bang shot? Oh, my Because he was like five feet behind the arc. It was Caitlin Clark like. And he just jacks it up, and it goes Falling off the glass. Falling over as he shoots. Oh, it's crazy. Yeah. The highlight reel was great. I didn't see the game, but... You can find it, and it's impressive to yeah, watch. Don't miss him tomorrow night. It's quite a performance he put on last night. Well, you got to assume that they're going to ride the hot hand. You know, you keep giving the guy the ball. Like you said, Shaw, he doesn't do layup lines, right? <laughs> no. He just shoots Practice. threes. He just practices threes. That's all he does. Bad news, happy music coming up. Next time we talk to Shaw, we'll get to Doc's racing report. We'll do that after Pantera from their seventh studio album, Far Beyond Driven, which came out on 30. this day in 1994. <laughs> Oh, God. Rock Mornings with Brian, Gene, and Shaw. Rock Mornings with Brian and Gene. You know me. I don't believe in God. It's not my thing. I'm not telling you you can't believe. Of course so you're not I, telling I, so, you that. So I don't, I don't toss around the word blessed because I just don't. Mm-hmm. It's a goofy word for me. But I feel blessed to have been able to see Pantera many times back in the day when it was in the 90s and, and it was Pantera. Mm-hmm. I mean, Bless Rock Fest for bringing him. I rocked out like a 16 year old kid. I had banged the entire time last summer, but there was nothing like a Pantera show in the 90s. It just was. Of all the Metallica shows I've been to, and I've been to a lot, and I love them, and I've been to all the all the big ones. There was just a different vibe at a Pantera show, and I I feel blessed that I went to a bunch of them. Those memories are core memories. Mm-hmm. What's that movie with the core memories? I, I don't. 
I'm, emotions. What is that one? Yeah, that Pixar one. That's yeah, me. That's you with your core memories. Yeah. 825 on a Friday morning means one thing and one thing only. The mid-pack legend, Mr. Technicality, Car 54, Car 54, Billy Doc Niles, a.k.a. Captain Retirement, a.k.a. Hashtag Mr. Fister, a.k.a. Hashtag this guy. Happy, happy, uh, <laughs> July. <laughs> <laughs> hashtag this guy. I'm kind of anal. Oh, he's kind of anal. Hashtag this guy. He's got it locked on the rock. He's listening to the doc. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag this guy. You're getting a thrill by listening to Bill. Hashtag this guy. Going to have to come from the back. Going to have to come from the back. Hashtag this guy. He gets to stay on the box. Oh, he does get to stay on the box. Hashtag this guy. Whoa, what am I touching here? Whoa, what are you touching here, Doc? Well, Doc just got, uh, just finished, you know, Bitch slapping up his fall guy, letting him know that that jabroni needs to know his role. <laughs> <laughs> Doc, where you at, buddy? I'm uh, sitting at that little rest, uh, that little rest stop in between Fenimore and Basketball right now. Seems like a good place to pull up stakes and give you guys a call. So what's going on this weekend with race racing, Doc? Is that what you want to talk about first, NASCAR? Well, yeah, we'll talk NASCAR. First of all, we'll talk a little bit about last week. You know, in the tire situation, you oh, saw that man. right away. With a, yeah, about well, 50 laps, they were blowing tires. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, they were running them right down to the cords. You saw Denny Hamlin's first 50-lap run. He was just a couple laps away from ending his day. Lucky him, they figured it out. And, uh, you know, and so it, it, it became a, a matter of uh, experience on, on how to manage your tires. That's like you see with these uh, 200-lap races around the, around the Midwest here. These guys are experienced at managing their tires so they got some tires left at the end, and that's exactly what Denny Hamlin, Martin Truex, and Brad Keselowski did. That's why they finished in the top three. Goodyear, they said they brought the exact same tire that they brought last fall that had absolutely no tire, hardly any tire wear. So right now they're doing some investigation. They're getting all the data from the teams. They're uh, they're going and checking out the track. They're trying to find out what went wrong. But bottom line is they actually turned into a pretty good race because you got you know young guys who thought they could beat the world, and they fell behind after about 10, 15 laps. And you had the experience that came to the front, as you saw with Hamlin, Truex, and, and Keselowski. This week, you're at the Circuit of Americas. It's a 3.4-mile, 20-turn road course in Texas. <clears throat> Qualifying record was set by William Byron last year. He got around that place in 2 minutes and 10 seconds. Uh, Grace winner last year was Tyler Reddick, fantasy experts. They like them some Reddick, some Chastain, and some Elliott. When I filled mine out last night, I'm looking at road course expert road course experts when it comes to this one. Almondinger, McDowell, Van Ginsbergen is going to be in that 91 car this weekend. Inside, VegasInsider.com brings us our odds this week. Reddick at plus 350, Ty Gibbs at plus 900, Christopher Bell at 1100, Byron at 1200, Almondinger at 1300. A couple of notes here for our two tracks. Red Cedar Speedway, big weekend for them. It's our car show and expo weekend at the Fanetti Community Center, located right next to the Speedway. Tonight, doors open at 5 p.m. Check out them shiny new cars that are going to be racing. They got a bags tournament at 6 o'clock, a Texas Hold'em tournament at 7 o'clock, and Carjackers DJ Entertainment will be be providing the entertainment tonight. Tomorrow at 9 in the morning, the parts and swap meet that runs until noon, the Euchre tournament at 1 the kids Easter egg hunt at three o'clock. At six o'clock tomorrow night, the 2023 season awards. Uh, re- you know, uh, recognizing all their champions from last year. And then after the awards banquet, the 53 North Band will entertain until for the rest of the night. Now, for more information on this, check out their website or their Facebook page. And folks, it's only three weeks until opening night at Red Cedar Speedway, Lacrosse Fairground Speedway. You want to check out what's going on with them. <clears throat> It's the God, God's Country Custom Auto Show going on all weekend at the South Hall of Lacrosse Center this weekend. Make sure to stop by the Lacrosse Fairgrounds Speedway booth, check out schedules, treats for the kids, and, you know, have a conversation with new general manager, Austin Wells. Doc Smoker calendar this week. Whoops, Doc just dropped his notes. Here we go. Doc Smoker calendar this weekend. We got two of them on schedule. Bachman Racing. You all right there, Butterfingers? You guys guys, guys, are rolling your eyes. I can tell. You okay? Doc, everything all right? Is drunk or what? No, he's all right. I'm I'm still alive. Bachman Racing Smoker uh, taking taking care of uh, Steve Bachman, who had an excellent season last year. At the Whiskey River Bar and Grill tomorrow afternoon, Chinese raffles, tip boards, basket raffles, 50-50 drawings. Plus, as part of the raffles, three Blackstone grills and a steel chainsaw. Free food and beer while it lasts, cash prizes, and a DJ party starts at 3 p.m. 
They also, tomorrow afternoon, England Motorsports Fundraiser supporting Jonathan England's run up at uh, Mississippi Thunder Speedway. That's at Walker, Silver Moon, and Alma. Free food and beer while it lasts. Silent auction, gun raffles. They're going to have bingo a ba- and a bags tournament. Party starts at 2 p.m. there. To keep up to date on all the smokers in the area, check out the Midwest Racing Smokers page on Facebook. And like I say every week, folks, you know, get out and support a local short track team at one of their smokers. Doc's first report has been brought to you by our friends at County Materials on Empire Street in Holman. That is this week's race report. DOC joining us at 825 on Fridays to talk racing. Find his smoker calendar on Facebook and let us know about your racing smoker so we can pass that info along. I got to stop watching these airbag videos. Is that what you're doing over there? So funny. (laughs) Dude's getting launched into the outer space. (laughs) That is totally a dude thing, too. Like, I don't know what you can say anymore in regards to men and women and whatever else is going but on. That's but a guy prank. That is yeah. a strictly male-dominated realm. Men are doing airbag pranks. I don't, I don't think I've ever seen one with a woman involved. It's just a bunch of dudes in a mechanic shop <laughs> launching, launching each yeah. other's asses into the air. It's so funny. The guy's like, if you've ever worked in an, at a mechanic shop, too, you know, it's like hard work. It's like real, actual work, physical labor. And you get done and you're tired and you just want to sit down for five seconds. You've had your hands all up in some lady's engine, oil and grease and everything all over you. And you sit down to relax. And, 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 the, and, your and, and the jackals you work with <laughs> stuck an airbag in the, in, the, in the friggin' chair and you get launched into Saturn's rings. It's crazy. <laughs> I can't stop watching these things. Rock mornings. Only on 95.7 The Rock. We're about to enter a beautiful, exciting, wonderful new world. <laughs> a cockroach living in your nostril. Now that's just nasty. Add in some haven't pooped for 30 days. Poop is raining from the ceilings. Poop. And sprinkle in some hashtag Florida man for flavor. Florida man. Florida man. Florida man. Florida man. Florida man. Florida man. Florida man puts his Burger King job, steals all of their chicken nuggets. It's bad news. Bad news. With happy music. Let's rock. Friday edition, Shaw. Let's go. Let's hear about the witch. Wanna... We'll get to the witch. All right. Uh, we'll start with the NCAA tournament. Ooh. Kentucky's loss to Oakland didn't just end a bunch of perfect brackets. It all but ruined many when it comes to the big picture. The third-seeded Wildcats were picked in 95% of brackets in the ESPN tournament challenge to beat number 14 seed Oakland. Not in jeans. She got right? she had Oakland. I What's did. more, 70%, 74% actually, had Kentucky making the Sweet 16. 28% had them making the Final Four. And 6.5% had them winning the national championship. By the end of the day, after the first round of games, only uh, 1,845 of more than 22 million brackets on ESPN's website were still perfect. 1,800, so... 1,800 out of 22 million. We'll see what happens after today's games. Mm -hmm. Uh, A hero British Airways pilot who saved hundreds of people from certain death after a jet was crippled by a cloud of volcanic dust, has now died at the age of 84. Captain Eric Moody died peacefully in his sleep at his home in the U.K. He was responsible for famously saving the lives of 263 people when in 1982, all four engines of the Boeing 747 he was piloting stopped midair when it flew through an ash plume over Indonesia. Captain Moody made an announcement to the passengers that has since been described as a masterpiece of understatement. He said, ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. We have a small problem. All four yeah. engines have stopped. We're doing our damnedest to get them under control. I trust you are not in too much distress. Incredibly, after 12 minutes with no power, the aircraft exited the ash cloud and all engines were restarted, allowing the aircraft to land safely. Captain Moody later said in an interview, it was, quote, a bit like negotiating one's way up a badger's arse. Heartfelt tributes have flooded <laughs> social media since the announcement of his death. Wow. wow. That's cool. Didn't never heard that story before. When are you flying? I, <laughs> stop. Please. My anxiety is already. I told a you problem. about that kayak website, right, Sean? I don't, you, don't, you hear don't me about that? Yes, they they stop. You, that's the crazy part. They let you choose which kind of plane you want to be mm-hmm. on. Boeing or not Boeing? <laughs> yeah. Right? <laughs> Most of us have never. We won't. Um, in deference to Gene, we won't uh, thank you, thank in, include you. the story thank about you. the plane that lost a door 
as it was flying out Thank of Vegas. You. So we'll just skip it. that one. Thank you, Another please. Another one? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, police in California have arrested a pastor on suspicion of attempted murder, charging that he paid nearly $40,000 to have his daughter's boyfriend shot oh. in a murder-for-hire plot last Yo. year. Police in Riverside, California, arrested Samuel Pasillas, uh, who they identified as one of two Spanish-speaking, or as pastor, rather, of a Spanish-speaking church congregation uh, in Victorville, California, north of San Bernardino. The investigation into the shooting, which happened in October of 2023, left a man in- and left a man injured is ongoing. The victim said he was shot multiple times from inside a car that pulled up alongside his. He was injured, drove himself to the hospital, and was treated for his gunshot wounds. Five months later, police said their investigation revealed that the incident was a murder-for-hire shooting. They uncovered evidence that the pastor met with the hitman, paid them, and provided information on the boyfriend's whereabouts on the night of the shooting. Was he trying to steal the guy's girlfriend or something? I don't know what the man was upset about, but obviously didn't like the boyfriend. Mm -hmm. A Texas man miraculously survived a complicated medical ordeal, beating the 4% odds doctors had given him. The tribulations of Stephen Spinal, a father in his late 30s, were brought on by his attempt to remove an ingrown hair from his groin area. He ended up in a medically induced coma. He caught a rare bacteria that started to shut down all of his organs, and he became severely, severely septic and in shock. While in the hospital, he also developed influenza and double pneumonia in both of his lungs, along with acute respiratory distress syndrome. He was placed on a medically induced coma for three weeks. Uh, they gave him just a 4% chance of survival. However, nothing short of a miracle, he survived and has now regained his ability to walk. An ingrown hair. Yes. What are you talking right. it about? It started as an ingrown hair, and it ended up with pneumonia and sepsis and all kinds of crazy yeah, stuff. shave your... Nether region there, mm-hmm. Shaw. Mm-hmm. Ugh. So you don't get them in grown hairs. Well, well, wow. I think maybe that's why you got it. Oh right. my gosh, horrifying. No hair down there. A fumbling armed robber uh-huh. in Washington State. Uh, hit up a Dollar Tree store the other day. Was it open or did the whole staff walk out like that place in Minnesota? (laughs) They were open and they had customers. Uh, But this guy is about as expert in uh, holding up a place as you would expect a guy who holds up a Dollar Tree store to be. All we got is like 30 bucks, dude. It's been a busy day. (laughs) Uh, The guy waved the gun around before pointing it at two employees, threatening to shoot them if they didn't give him the money. As he made those threats, though, he fumbled his gun, which caused two 9mm bullets to fall to the floor. He then told the clerk to sit down while the manager opened the safe and gave him $1,894 in cash. So were the the bullets in the gun and they came out? Yes, they fell out. They fell out of the gun? They fell out of the gun. He must not have had it chambered properly. Wow. Uh, they're still looking for this guy, by the way. and he well, should be hard to find. Money. Follow the trail of bullets. Right, exactly. The he keeps dropping. keeps dropping all his bullets. A South Carolina woman lost her hand after a freak accident with a hair dryer that left her with severe burns. Ugh. Mary Wilson was drying her hair in the bathroom before bed when her life would be changed forever. She suddenly passed out, and the hair dryer that was still running scorched her hand as she lay on top of it. She ended up with third-degree burns that went all the way to the bone. She oh. thinks a shock from oh. the hair dryer is what caused her to pass out. Uh, she was found by her partner lying on the floor about 20 minutes later. They rushed her to a hospital. Doctors found nerve damage so severe they had to amputate her hand and her wrist. Holy crap. Damn alligator bit my hand off. Oh, my God. Actually, a hair dryer got it. Right. She's oh. trying to stay positive. She said, I'm still going to live my life to the fullest. It's just a hand. What is this, 10% of my body? She's now looking forward to getting a prosthetic. Is it the wiper? Is it the wiping hand? Because I don't know if I could go on without the. I, I don't know if I could learn lefty. I don't know if I could do it. I, I honestly don't know. If it's I don't understand lefty. how. You That's could the be. question I always ask people when they're telling me they're getting surgery, like carpal tunnel or whatever. I'm like, is it your yeah. wiping hand? Because I don't know if I could go left for a couple of months while I got this thing in a slingshot. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like uh, most of the, you know, cooking, writing, and whatever. I mean, you know, I could maybe figure that. But the wiping thing. Whole different story, Shaw. I don't know if I could do it. You've lefty. really thought about this? I, yeah, I'm concerned. Well, you know me. I'm I'm obsessed with bathroom stuff. Mm-hmm. Talk to the hand. Yeah, yes. talk to the I hand. Mean, yeah, not this oh. hand. Man, uh, there was a funeral recently in London, and not everybody could make it. So the church set up a Zoom so people could watch it online. And one woman who who was watching on Zoom accidentally broadcast herself 
while she was in the shower. Ooh. She couldn't make it to the service, but was getting ready to go to the wake later on. She wanted to watch, so she set her computer up right next to her shower, but didn't realize that her camera was on. Yeah. There was a screen oh, yeah. set up at the funeral, so people in the church <laughs> saw it. One person on the Zoom said she what? didn't just shower, she also shaved. So oh, apparently snap. had some real OnlyFans vibes to wow. it. Uh, she only found out about it when she showed up to the wake. Grief is a uh, powerful aphrodisiac, Shaw. Is that right? Oh well, that's what Will Ferrell said. He, he's crashing funerals. Maybe right? she was getting ready to meet somebody at the wake. And oh. this story out of Burlington, Iowa, where a woman was arrested after police say she lit items on fire on a stranger's porch. Michelle Young is facing charges of reckless use of fire and possession of drug paraphernalia. Police and fire were called on Tuesday to reports of a porch fire. Yeah. The homeowner said her home security cameras captured a woman on the porch who lit something on fire. Are you a good witch or a bad witch? Officers found the woman, identified as Young. She admitted to starting the fire when officers asked her what she was doing. She told officers she believed the home belonged to a friend, and she saw a sign outside the home that said, Witches Welcome. And, well, because she was a witch, she lit some items on fire. She felt welcome. She said she wasn't going to hurt anyone or let the fire get out of control. (laughs) Yeah, they all say that. Uh, uh, By the way, the homeowner told police she did not know this lady. She didn't know. Just some stranger. Uh, The woman had been walking around the street uh, for a couple of hours picking up miscellaneous items. The light on fire? uh, Yeah. A car's taillight, tinfoil, bark, and a yellow lawn flag. She said again, she believed the home belonged to her friend, and she had knocked three times but didn't get a response. How many times you knocked? She then sat down on a chair on the porch and smoked a cigarette. She knocked again, and when she didn't get an answer, she lit the items that she had with her on fire. Yeah, she uh, apparently... Is very uh, pleased to be getting her mugshot taken. Yeah, too. That's she's quite a grin. Very excited to be <laughs> photographed. I don't know, maybe it was the first time anybody's she's wanted been- to take her picture in a mm-hmm. long time, Shaw? I know is that she is very happy in that photograph. She's got a nice ride in a car from there to the right. police station. And now she got three hots and a cod coming her way. Life is looking up. Maybe she's got uh, some fire starting apparatuses in her cell. And she's... Wouldn't put it past her. She is... Yeah. The hairdo told, is... <laughs> I told you. It's, All you got to do is Google Iowa witch fire. It should <laughs> pop right up. And you won't want to miss it. Yeah. Shouldn't... Sh- yeah, you don't want to miss this one. It's really, really good. Yeah. The roof, the roof, the roof is on fire, no, Sean. it's actually a lawn flag and some tin foil and, and some a car s- and a car light, some yeah, taillight. taillight. <laughs> yeah, she set it all on fire, it's just a picking up things. Collection. To set you can burn nachos, right? Doritos, right? Can't you start Doritos on fire? Start a forest fire with those things. The roof. Yeah. The roof. The roof is. There's people like that among us, Shaw, just walking around, <laughs> voting. You know, allowed to just vote. Walking around. Allowed to breathe our air. You know what I mean, Shaw? Mm-hmm. Is on fire. We don't need yeah. no water. Let the mother... Can't have her out there, Shaw. She's not out there anymore. No. Casting spells and setting <laughs> fires. <laughs> have fun watching basketball this yeah, weekend. Yeah, you too. If you want a basketball couch, buddy, you he's, know where to find me. Mm-hmm. He's, he's Go 4-3. He's your guy. Or 3-4, three, Shaw. 3-4. Three, exactly. Either way. both It pays both ways. Either way. 3-4, three, 4-3. Four, four, three. I'll bring I'll bring the beer. I get the invite. <laughs> it's just hanging there. I know. <laughs> it, it always does. Rock mornings Monday to Friday, six to nine. Call. Hello. Email. I tried emailing you. Text. So many ways to check in with us. Check. Check. We rely on you guys for traffic updates, requests, and all sorts of other stuff. Check this out. Got an email from Brian talking about talk like William Shatner Day. Mm-hmm. Said TJ Hooker, early 80s cop show with the Shat and Heather Locklear. I said, oh, yeah, I remember oh, it yeah. well. Anytime you got Heather Locklear. You remember it well. In tight blue pants. Probably going to watch. Brian said, big time. Cheryl texted in. Laughing emojis, crying yeah. laughing emojis. About, the Iowa witch lady must have gone and seen oh, the, the mug it's, shot. It's classic. It's, it's an all-timer. It's good. Yeah. All-timer. She does look very happy. Oh, she's thrilled to be there. <laughs> Unlike Nick Nolte and the guy from Glee. Or not Glee. Uh, what was it? Party 5 that beat up the bus driver. 
What's that unlike guy's name? The, unlike that, this he was lady on, was... He was on Lost, right? Oh, yeah. Remember him? She's happy. Let's she was super happy. Driver. It's time for your mugshot now. Okay, let's do this. Game on. Jim... T- Jim's... Uh, Jim... Jim's obsessed with taxes. This whole who'd you rather thing. Jim is still on it today. Is he really? He said she probably had to pay a tax on the fire permit. LOL. <laughs> I don't know about a tax on the permit, but you definitely are supposed to pay permits, and I'm not paying those either. Yeah. You kiss my ass. <laughs> he thinks he's getting another dollar from me. Got a text from Greg. Said, I can't believe Doc mentioned that stretch between Fenimore and Boscobel. Back in 2001, I had my 1985 Nissan Maxima going 116 at 3 a.m. Took me like four minutes to go from Fenimore to Boscobel. <laughs> That was as fast as I ever drove. I can't do that anymore, though. Not worth it. No. Yeah. Those are the days. Four minutes. Yeah. Wow. Mm. I was, dude. Yeah. I was driving like that when I was. Mine was in the 90s. But, yeah. I'm a lead foot. Somebody texted in and said Inside Out. That was a movie I was looking for with the core memories yes, and the yes, emotions. Yes, 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 yes. Also, they wanted to hear a song that really says F my ex-wife. There's a lot of anger on this Friday morning, isn't there? <laughs> hey, we got an email from uh, Ian. Ian. Long time. Is this the guy listener. from South Africa? He used to be in South Africa. Okay. Now he's in Ireland, but he's emailing from London listening to us because he went, uh, took a day off yesterday and went to see Judas Priest. Saxon and Uriah Heap at Wembley. Wow. Rob still has it. Hell yeah, he does. Takes care of himself. 8,000 fans and He's amazing. He's been sober evening. for like umpteen yeah, years, yeah, yeah. man. Melissa texted in and said, The things that Brian thinks way too much about are always interesting. LOL. What did you think? Oh, the hand they, thing. The hand thing, probably. Is it airbags? No, it's probably the hand thing. The hand thing? Oh, the wiping? Yes. Yeah. I, I had a friend of mine who recently told me they were going in for carpal tunnel, and he's like, I got to be in a sling for all this time. And you were like, And the first thing I said, I said, is that your dominant hand? And he said, no, thankfully it's the other one. And I said, because I don't know. I said, if I had if I had to have carpal tunnel on my right hand, I don't know if I could wipe with my left. I don't, I literally don't think I could do it. I do, it's like, have you ever, have you ever seen someone who only dribbles with their right hand and then tries it's, to dribble with their left? Yes, I it's have. It's hilarious. Yes. Then you take that and you apply it to bathrooms. And next thing you know, it's a mess down there, and I got to get in the shower. I think you'll be okay. Put a bag over my arm. <laughs> you ever have to have to? Dude, I don't know. I'm scared okay. to try it. I'm not, yeah. Get a bidet. I'm not getting a bidet. <laughs> so stupid, people in their stupid bidets. You should get water one. up your own ass. <laughs> Ashley said, hey, Brian, just think of your choice of being tax-free and then winning the Powerball. A whole nother caveat to that whole tax thing. Oh, Okay. You win the Powerball and they don't take any of it. You get it all. Buy your Mega Millions tickets today, by the way. And then Powerball tomorrow. And Powerball tomorrow. Thank you for all the correspondence. We'll talk to you on Monday.